Hey everybody, Fang here with this week's Design Cinema, episode number 25 called Frankenstein. So it appears that we've been getting a lot of questions regarding Photoshop layers and how their settings are uh, distributed for a painting such as this. So I thought this week we'll go back to a painting I've done about a month ago. This is uh, done in September, as you can see here, and discuss the various settings I've used for the layers. This painting here was done in front of uh, my students here for senior term. This painting took about five and a half hours to do, uh, so quite a long time. This is a very detailed painting. As you can see, we could zoom completely into Mr. Frankenstein here, or at least my take of Frankenstein. This guy's quite creepy looking. Um, but when I, and when I teach, unlike the other tutorials you've been seeing, especially episode like 22, 3, and 4, uh, I don't use too many layers for those recent paintings. However, because when I'm teaching these ones, I save every single layer I do. Therefore, the students can have my PSD files and go back and sort of reverse engineer the steps it took to get to this point. Um, so for this tutorial, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to step one and kind of go over um, step by step up which layer and which setting they're each done. Um, I guess a little bit about this painting. So. The story behind this one is I want to do a little cool uh, math scientist lab, the kind of things you see in those 1930s movies where the monster's coming alive, you know, Frankenstein's like, it's alive, that, that type of scenario. Except we don't want to copy something that's been done before. We don't want to do, uh, you know, imitations of how the previous movies or games have done these. And this is so, this is my take here. Uh, we design various elements. This is a typical production painting where you're trying to sell a design and a camera angle, lighting, and mood uh, all in the same painting. So you can see in my idea here is that this uh, giant generator is, gener is uh, making the lightning instead of getting it from the uh, sky. This machine will generate itself. Here are some lab materials here, little jars, vases, and those kind of things. Now here, of course, is the monster. That's Frankenstein here, uh, at least in our story here. Uh, he's put together various pieces of other Things. You can see all the stitching that's going on here, right? still some blood coming out here. So it's not the, it's not a, just a human uh, with one cut line, which is I think the brain, right? The original is just the brain re replaced. So this is why I kind of wanted to replace all sorts of different parts on him. And you can see some blood on the floor here as well. And please watch this in HD on full screen, then you get to uh, see all the details that's in this painting. So this is the final painting. Let's go back to step one and show you guys how this was uh, put together. So I'll just close this for a second here. Look. Big change, huh? So here's kind of like Photoshop uh, file number one. You can see it says uh, set design 01A. Um, this is typically how I work. I save many versions. You can see it's eventually I open A, B, C, D, E, F, right? And the final will be the uh, thing you just saw. If I turn all the layers off, you can see we actually started with a photo that I took in France. This is taken at the Louvre on the second story. If you've ever been there, you'll see that they have these French, uh, I think these are part of Napoleon's uh, dining room or something like that, something to around that time period. Very beautiful stuff, high detail. And I thought this, this will make a great plate uh, for a set. And this is very typical in the film industry as well because directors often like to shoot at real places where they have location scouts. And they'll come back with a shot like this, you know, saying, hey, look, we got permission to shoot here. We can move stuff around and we're gonna shoot in this set. So design the Frankenstein set into this picture. So you have to learn how to work with this kind of restrictions. Not everything is always free. Not everything is grand sci-fi, um, massive things, massive scale things. In this case, we're very, uh, I guess the set design is shrunken down dramatically. The scale of things is not massive anymore. It's it's very personal. You're in the room. So uh, what I did here, I extended the set. You can see the white here is not part of the original photo. The white is for me to extend the set. So we have a 235 ratio, similar to a DVD or a film. And here I just kind of copy and pasted some of the background. So the color palette could extend through. You can see the perspective is not that correct yet, right? But it doesn't matter. I'm going to draw stuff there. But knowing your perspective is very, very important when you're trying to match photorealistic plates into a painting because my painting has to match the camera angle, right? So here you can see something called grid. When I turn this on, this is my reverse engineering of the shot, basically the camera. I find out where the center of the lens was and also how much flare or how much uh, distortion the lens had on this image. And you can see this camera, the original lens used was not a standard uh, 35. We have some slight distortion here. So you're probably going down to a 25 or 20 mil shot here because of the extension of the perspective you see on the side here. We got a um, kind of a warm eyes view. Horizon lines right here, you can see there, that's the horizon. So, and then we have a vanishing point. By using the chairs, we could get the other vanishing point. 
Okay, the paintings on the wall, the fireplace, this kind of stuff gives us one vanishing point, which is quite easy to obtain. And then using these chairs, which I assume is lined up in the room, will give us the other vanishing point. And that's enough information for me to then design my set upon. Right. I lighten up the whole image. It's quite uh, dark, you can see here. You can probably barely see that on YouTube, so you know, watching on full screen, you can. But I lined it up. That way I can see my design on top of this image. This layer doesn't appear to do anything. And here's my initial sketch. You can see very loose. I'm going to turn off the grid right now. This is my design sketch. So here's where I lay in the base ground for everything. You can see here, this is the platform where Frankenstein is going to be mounted. This is the machinery. Here's some wooden boards to sort of reach there. So we're still within the confines of this set. However, we are set dressing it, right? That's a term we use uh, when you're designing. Set dressing an existing place, right? Remove the furniture, remove everything, but we're gonna build this on top of it. So you can see the kind of wood framing. So everything, there's no value, there's no paint, there's no detail. It's about holding up the value, holding up the space. Next, I wanna concentrate to expose these two lights. I want three light sources in here, or well, actually four. We have a major one here. Frankenstein's going to get his own light source. We have a smaller chandelier light here, and this machine itself will light up. So we have a nice left to right flow of light. More details, just some beams. You can see the initial Frankenstein being put in place. Right. Just a quick mock up of him. Additional darkening. So even though I brought it up before, I brought up the lighting here just so I could see the image. That way I could draw this step without drawing completely dark but I darken it back down whoops, to this level so I could then extract the light for Mr. Frankenstein which you'll see in a second here. I did some color correction here I removed the yellow and brought everything to blue uh, because there's a certain mood I'm trying to achieve here I'm trying to create that kind of very uh, claustrophobic environment very messy but yet there's a lot of stuff going on right? so I want some cool and warm lighting to help with that so here you can see the layer so far these layers have no settings you can see they're pretty much normal the darkened layer this one is set on multiply Right. This one has a little bit of dodge in it, but very, very, very light. You can see this is set, uh, when I painted this, this is literally on 20% or 10% uh, opacity. So if I load my brush here, you can see that if I just pick um, this light yellow here, for example, and paint on 20%, you'll see it makes very subtle changes here, very slowly. Because if I overdo it, this will be too much, too strong. Right? So it's been very, very subtle more atmosphere fog to start breaking out some separation and level adjust to bring up the uh, highlights and darkness right? so that's what this first file did um, so just to repeat, prep the set find perspective find, uh, balance out the lighting do your initial design, super rough, nothing has to be final here right? but the major pieces, the major lighting and everything is in place, you can see the set is drawn within perspective it's drawn with all these lines and the correct uh, proportions as for shortening as well as the camera angle all right so if you don't know that some some words like for shortening you should look these up on the internet uh, how they affect perspective because for shortening is very important in a shot like this where the distance between the first chair right you can see here the first chair and the second chair you could calculate the for shortening that's happening between here so you know that the exact distance of how far the next chair will be so if I want to put this chair say over here on this side of the screen I don't have to guess I could reverse engineer that and that's pretty much what for shortening is right an object that's disappearing or uh, scaling in space um, and we have to make sure that scale is correct in our drawing because imagine we put a guy and he's this big here right kind of like this high and then suddenly by the time he's over here he's this big that doesn't make any sense because the perspective and the camera doesn't allow it for that right a person that big over here is going to be about this big over here right which makes sense but when everything's covered up you have to have the correct for shortening pre-calculated so you don't draw the wrong scale of things right so mr frankenstein over here is not going to turn to a giant one over here he's going to um, for shortening correctly um, there's a layer here called test what this layer is is kind of a rough really rough painting you can see here that i don't use for the final I do this layer to tell myself what this thing will eventually look like. Right? It's a quick, super messy uh, paint over that tells myself, okay, here's what I'm planning to do. Because a painting like this would take something like five hours to do, sometimes longer, sometimes it could take you two days, depending on how intricate you want the final to be and what your client is, uh, is after. So imagine to spend uh, five hours or two days on this painting and you have no idea where you're going to go with it. That's quite dangerous in terms of production because what if you're one day into it or even three hours into it and you find it's not something you like.